a, it's quite an intro right there. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Gordon LaPlante. Um, I'm going to preface by saying those who know me, I speak very fast, and I'm going to try my best not to. So um, this is uh, the Genie Max printer. Um, it actually started um, as a concept, as an idea, and I'm going to kind of go through just a quick history of where we were and what we're thinking of doing with it and, you know, what happens from there. Uh, RepRap was the beginning. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, RepRap is actually a uh, more of an open source 3D printing uh, kind of community. Um, several people designed 3D printers, put them up for, uh, for use for people to download, to download the bill of uh, parts, the list of parts, um, and produce their own printer. Uh, there's open source software involved in this, there's open source um, hardware and fabrication ideas, everything. So, you know, I, I found out about it and decided um, to build my own. Um, the RepRap itself uh, used uh, um, what's called FDM, Fused uh, Deposit Modeling. Um, they actually renamed it FFF for trademark reasons, but it basically is like a, like, like it says here, a very precise hot glue gun. So I, I'm not sure how many people know about the 3D printing scene and what's happening, but the maker bot and a lot of the similar pr printers use the same technique. Um, the RepRap is one of them. So. Here's my rep wrap. Um, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> it, it actually printed pretty well, uh, considering that it's, it's Home Depot parts, you know, Home Depot threaded rod and bolts and nuts. And the electronics are, are it's an Arduino board with a, um, a shield that has been uh, designed and put out in the open source community for people to make their own. A lot of people are selling these kits. You can go to eBay and look up rep wrap and you're gonna find hundreds of people selling these kits. Um, all of the parts on here, the idea being all the parts here were printed on someone else's rep wrap. Uh, so it's a really neat idea where anything that might be, in this picture it's kind of hard to tell, but anything that's black is a printed part from someone else's rep wrap. Um, the idea being that you print one for your friend and help them assemble it, which is a great, great move, I think, and you know, it really did a lot for 3D printing. Um, so here's it printing just a part. Uh, this is um, not looking too pretty with the exposed wiring and whatnot, but uh, this was the first printer. Um, when I first printed on the RepRap, um, this is actually, I think, one of the very first prints, and it was not pretty. It's, it's a pretty ugly print. Just changing the software settings and the open source software, I achieved some pretty fine, I think it was like 0.2 millimeter, somewhere around there, um, layer thickness, which looked great to me. I was shocked just by changing some of the software settings. Um, <coughs> initially, I started printing brackets and upgrades for the printer itself and, you know, cute little teapots and things. <laughs> then I realized, oops, sorry. I realized, um, why don't I start designing new parts for that printer? Um, when I started going down that road, it said, or I said to myself, well, why am I even using the old printer? Let's just make a new printer. So I got to the point where I decided to prototype my own printer just, just to see what I can come up with. Uh, the limitations on the other one were that it's a, it's a pretty small size. The bed is only about six inches by, six by six by six, really. Um, which is not terrible, but you can only print so much on that. And there were a lot of upgrades in the community that I wanted to kind of incorporate, where you can print from an SD card, or you can print quicker, or any number of things. So the initial prototypes, I started um, modeling in 3D. I decided model as much as I can in 3D, get everything figured out, um, go through all the iterations for the prototypes in there before I even hit the print button. So here are several iterations starting, the first one that you saw on the previous page was the actual first model. And then I started thinking about size, thinking about parts, what parts have to be printed, what parts can be purchased or you know, found. Um, so here's just different iterations for the uh, actual prototype. Um, I decided early on to go quite large with the bed. So the bed is, it was supposed to be about 18 by 18 inches by about 10, which is huge in the, in the printing world. Uh, it, it ended up shrinking a little bit. It's currently about 15 by 15 by 10, which I think I can get even bigger. Uh, but anyway, here's the final, uh, final model in 3D. Um, I decided anything, this is actually a different color scheme, but anything that's blue is a printed part, which takes time. So that's one limitation I learned with a printer. But um, any part, you can pretty much design within limitations what you need for this printer, <coughs> um, make upgrades, make changes and you can prototype all night long. So if I, I actually made several brackets where, you know, I didn't like one particular design in a single night, I could make four or five different iterations, which is great. You know, you don't have to send out, you don't have to call people or, or worry about any sort of manufacturing process. It's not great for the F, uh, FDM world, but <laughs> it's great for just prototyping, pure prototyping. 
Um, a lot of the parts on here were purchased. Uh, the framing system itself is one particular company, but all the electronics and um, belts and motors were either from large distributors, from McMaster Car. Uh, if no one knows who that is, find it out, Google it, because their 3D models will save your life. Uh, they're very accurate. I've seen it. Um, the electronic kits I purchased, there's a lot of companies still selling RepRap kits, so based off of that, I found a lot of companies selling uh, the electronics I needed, the wiring I needed, um, several things. So this is the prototype I built for myself just to, just to have fun, have something in our living room that will never go away. <laughs> the uh, framing system itself, which I actually have a, a sample of here. It's, um, this, well, this is actually 8020. It's an it's a, it's a amazing, amazingly strong aluminum extrusion system. Uh, I've seen it used mainly for, um, uh, let's see, the racks for electronics or maybe carts or certain things that need like, a, lot of, a lot of durability. But for the printer, it was really nice that you could easily latch on parts. So if you design a part you want to latch on to your printer, you can just slide it on um, after the fact. So you don't have to deal with threaded rod or, or anything else. So I've actually um, created filament holders or fans or anything else. And it, li it literally just slides on, and then you just bolt it in with your, your Allen key or Allen wrench. Um, and I have a series of, actually, there's a T-nut system that you have to purchase with their system, so I'm, I just designed my own and put in a, you know, a standard quarter-inch bolt that was much, much cheaper. So, so once I had the model done, and you know, as, as good as I can get it in 3D, I decided to start printing. So I used the old RepRap to start printing the parts and prototyping the parts for my other printer, um, which is a lot of fun. I learned. <laughs> Going from 3D to even printing, there's things you can and cannot do. There's certain overhangs you can't do, and there's just things that the printer is limited by. But based on that, I had to redesign several things. I actually cheated. The, the previous image was actually after I did all of these you know, printing iterations. But yeah. that being said, uh, I finished all the printed parts for the printer. I'm sorry I couldn't bring it. It's quite large, and it's still a prototype, so it's not the best for transportation. Uh, the red parts are the printed parts. These um, T-nuts here are actually the blue ones that I, I replaced and made much, much cheaper. Um, and then here's the actual framing system. In this case, I did it black instead of the uh, silver. And here's me uh, assembling it in our, our living room. The, uh, the frame itself is, once, once it was all bolted together and, and secured, it was very solid. I was, I was actually impressed. I can lift the whole printer simply by just you know, grabbing it on the top. But it is about 40 pounds all, with everything on it. And here's just a, a quick shot of the printer done. Um, thanks. The, there are parts on here that I, I know need changes. You know, there, there's, there's weak parts. There are parts that just take up forever to print. Uh, the electronics enclosure here is actually printed. So the, the top actually flips down. It's really weak. It, it, I need a, a proper electronics box. But these are, it didn't matter for this because I was just making a printer for my, my living room. So who cared? Oh, actually, that's right. I have the video here. Here's the, the final one printing in, in our living room now. Oh, it's a shame. I think the sound. I wanted to get the sound on. It's actually a, a very quiet printer. Uh, if you can't get it up, it's, it's no worry. I was actually shocked to hear several other printers uh, around that are quite loud. So the only thing we really have is a fan in the electronics case, a blower fan on the actual extruder, but it's actually it's pretty quiet. Um, I can attest to that. Yeah. She's, <laughs> it has not woken her up once. It's really, yeah. <laughs> and so, of course, I did a time lapse like, like you see in so many others, but. That's <laughs> great. I actually realized our apartment has a lot of light or windows, so it got kind of dark during the day and then it got kind of bright. So you'll see the <laughs> exposure change a lot. <laughs> Again, this was still early. Um, these are these are newer shots, but this printer at the time was it was just a thought of keeping it in my in, in our living room. You know, just keeping it um, something that I can just play with and, and prototype other ideas with. Um, then we decided to maybe go ahead and we're going to go for Kickstarter with a um, a focus on it's a kit. You know, there, there's a lot of things that cannot be manufactured in this. There's a lot of things that would take an incredible amount of time to change. So we're going to start with the idea of, of going to Kickstarter, seeing what happens with it as a kit. You assemble it, um, that makes our market a little bit smaller, which is fine, but that's also what we want because to print all the parts for this takes time, a lot of time. Um, 
And that's when we started realizing what Kickstarter means. You know, I, I'm actually new to the Kickstarter world. Uh, Jonathan's been great giving information in these meetups and everyone really uh, of opening my eyes to what it really means to start selling a product as opposed to just printing parts. Um, refinement of parts kind of happened throughout the whole process as you saw these images. Um, I constantly had to change brackets or had to change, make sure everything worked well but also was solid and secure and, and could hold up to abuse. Uh, the distributors, uh, I've started actually looking at other places to, to source parts for the printer, different hot ends or different um, bolts or whatever. If you can shave off a couple dollars here and there and put it towards something, you know, better parts are elsewhere, that's, that was my focus. Uh, upgrades, the original RepRap, as great as it is, a lot of people have designed a lot of great upgrades for it. And we're trying to incorporate some of those in this as far as printing. I, something as dumb as putting a light on the actual extruder, you rarely see that. and that's really important to me. Um, buildability, um, if we're selling it as a kit, we don't necessarily have to manufacture a lot or, or assemble a lot ourselves, but it still has to be easily put together by someone reading the instructions. Um, reliability, obviously, as I mentioned before, and then the fun stuff that we like doing just for the heck of it is promotion. And that's the pretty stuff, promotion. Um, I can actually pass around uh, some of these parts here. All of these were printed on the printer at various different stages. I have models that look good and models that look bad on purpose so you can see what happened. So is the good one? That's a good one. That's actually a bonsai uh, pot that you can actually put a bonsai plant in. Here's the original one for that that did not work very well. Take a look at the bottom and see what happened, what failed. Um, feel free. You can pass around all sorts of stuff. Some of the quality is great. Some of it's not so great. I've learned that with different filaments, different plastics, there's just issues sometimes. Um, and I'm trying to get it to be fairly, fairly reliable so it's consistent across the board. Um, actually, the bonsai pot that's going around, I, I sent my first Shapeways model out and got an aluminum model back just to see what it was like. So I thought that was fun to see. Shapeways was here a few meetups ago, so it was fun to, to see that. Yeah, feel free to pass those around. And yeah. I don't know if you're ready for a question, but... Um, oh, actually, just, yeah. just a, the pretty stuff, and then no, I think I'll be done. This, is this off your printer or Shapeways? That's Shapeways. That's the aluminum Shapeways. For those who haven't seen the Shapeways model. So, uh, I have a background. Uh, I'm actually an architect, but I have a background, and I've been doing graphics for years, so I just love doing promotional stuff. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but we decided to make some images. Um, this is actually the kind of a beauty <laughs> shot of the product, just for the heck of it. We actually... Uh, we designed several logos just to have a logo. We have um, we want to put it on whatever whatever's out there. So we actually have a logo now. There's actually printed logos right there. And this is just a uh, a tech sheet that you can pass out like a little four by six card whenever you meet people. Uh, it's going to have the tech technical specifications on it. Uh, I don't have them now because they're actually changing slightly uh, for some of the upgrades on the <coughs> printer. I like the uh, tagline. <laughs> These are, these are actually um, some of the uh, elevations and, and plans from, from, uh, from the render engine. We started doing just quick quality shots. We figured if we're going to do the Kickstarter page, you have to show the quality of what, what can be achieved. So we're trying to take some decent photos. Some of these are not the best prints, so they're just kind of test uh, shots while we refine the, the printer. I'm actually building two more printers as the final prototypes. Here we just have different colors of filament. Um, it's kind of hard to tell in here, but the Lego, I think this was about 0.1 millimeters. Yeah, that's outstanding. Yeah, it, I was actually pretty shocked at what I can achieve. Uh, that one's actually here floating around. You guys can take a look at the Legos. Um, we have YouTube and, and um, I'm sorry, um, Twitter, and we actually have a blog that we're putting up just to kind of share information about the printer. Not even to sell it, but just to hopefully people can learn from the upgrades that are happening and the changes. We want people to hopefully learn from what is being done here. Uh, now, we're, where we're at now, we're, we're not very far along the Kickstarter, the whole Kickstarter campaign. Um, we actually just met somebody that's going to produce a video for us uh, just to show off the printer. The website development and promotional card printing are pretty much in, in, in operation right now. Obviously, connections with, uh, with distributors and producers. There's a, a lot of uh, talks we could have about uh, um, possibly injection molding some of these parts. Um, to make it so it can be produced much quicker. Uh, the Kickstarter page and um, instruction manual are also right now in progress. Obviously there's many concerns after hearing 
people talk and uh, hearing what it really takes to put together this printer. But um, we were pretty worried about meeting demand if it did get big for whatever reason, hopefully. It takes about 40 hours to print all the parts for one printer right now, and that's not good. That's not possible. So we're really working on trying to refine it and make it so you can get it down to a reasonable hour. Because even if we have 20 printers going, there's only so much you can meet. But selling it as a kit, we hope, will reduce at least some of the load for now until we can get to a point where we're injection molding a lot of the parts or whatever we have to, to do. Um, yeah, for now, we're actually out of our apartment. You know, obviously, that's how these things start. Um, the upgrades and changes have been going on, ongoing for months. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think somebody mentioned in a previous um, meetup about project creep, and that's a constant problem of mine where I want to change and change and upgrade and change, so we, we're trying to hit a point where we are happy with the product and just get the kit out there and see what happens. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you guys. Um, open for plenty of suggestions and comments and questions. And this is the shameless plug. Feel free to check our Twitter and our, and our blog. And whoever wants some logos, we have about 12. Feel free to take some. So. Yes. Have you made your own custom software for this? Software, I'm sticking with the open source for now, it's, which is obviously there's no need to hire programmers. But um, I would love to work with the, the makers of that software that ha that's open source to work better with this printer. Uh, but it's for now, it's just us, just uh, a few people, just trying to push on this. I'd love to get our own software at some point. But it seems like many companies that are even um, even large companies now are still open source, uh, are using open source software. I think even Solidural is. So it's the software out there, Google it, check it out. There's some amazing open source software, and people are really developing it. Question over here. Um, well, first, the cost. And second, uh, what are the differences? Uh, I imagine this is probably a lot cheaper uh, between like the maker box and you. Is it just really big marketing machine behind their machines, or do they really have a big advantage? Uh, I'll say, when I first made the RepRap, I thought that it would be terrible. And I was actually very shocked at the quality you can achieve. Uh, some of these are printed on the RepRap. Um, the biggest difference between MakerBot is it's, it's a pretty solid product. You turn a key and it, it starts. Uh, it has issues. I have friends that have bought some that have issues. But it's, it's, it's a product now. This, we're really going for, it's, it's larger. Uh, it's upgradable. It's hopefully open source enough that people can add parts and I want to have people share parts on it. And it's a kit. So we're really going for, for more of an angle that, you know, you're, you're Assembling it yourself, makers can make it. Um, kind of in line with the rep wrap, like an upgraded rep wrap, really. So we're really focusing on that. But we can make, we can easily meet uh, maker bot quality. Do you have any any clue what what product what, what it might price out at? We um, I know what it takes to buy s pretty much parts not in bulk. You know, you're buying parts from Amazon right now. Um, we have an idea. I'd, I'd like to keep it as a kit, maybe in the thousand to eleven hundred dollar range, but that's completely up in the air right now. I know that uh, you know the larger maker bots go for twenty two hundred dollars, but that's an assembled product that works right out of the box. So we're, we're thinking about selling it possibly two variants: one that's about twenty five percent assembled or twenty percent assembled with all the complex parts assembled, and the rest you do yourself. And maybe a second one that's much more along, maybe seventy percent assembled. So that might be a difference in the price right there. So. Question over there. No, no, me, you. Oh. <laughs> Uh, in your feature creep, I haven't seen the current feature. Yeah. Um, how would you make your decisions regarding uh, what base materials you're going to support right from the get go? You know, which then informs the whole design process. You know, the heated bed versus no heated bed kind of thing and all that. Um, yeah. What were you going at it from a from a initial philosophy or just from a, what it, what you need right away? I'm going based upon um, a what's what's the most common ABS and PLA are right. readily available, and I figured if you really stick with the common ones, what's happening in the filament market is great. There's there's new filaments coming out. It seems like weekly, uh, so I'm really trying to make it in such a way that it can can support all of all of the common filaments. Um, so right now it's PLA. PLA, you're right, does not need a heated bed. Uh, I've actually seen, a, I think the MakerBot, the new one, does not have a heated bed. No. The two, right? The 2X, yes, I think, does. Uh, does it actually have it? The 2 doesn't. The 2X does. The 2X does. Yeah, so there are limitations in this. And I actually tried to find a heated bed that size, and it's just not really that common. I had to go to like an aquarium tank bed to get something. <laughs> the, the silicon mats that 
Yeah, the, the, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm looking into the, the PLA works great for me. It sticks to the bed fine and it doesn't need to be heated, but you're right. I think the next step would be to just experiment, see what happens with other filaments uh, beyond what I've done and hopefully adapt to it. But it's also open source. So if people want to add parts, the hope is add whatever you need to to it. So, yeah. Question over here? Yeah. Uh, I th I th thank you very much for, for coming and joining us. Um, you said you made a couple of like, um, minor tweaks to like uh, the software, right? And then it had like uh, uh, large uh, results with, with the final product. You're going to put that, you know, put the capability of changing that in the in the, uh, in the user's hands, the customer. The great thing about it still being again, oh sorry. Just one more question. Yeah, yeah. question. Is there a trade-off when you adjusted something? Did you lose something and then gain something else? And I'll say that, um, again, being the open source software, it's the people that design this are really geniuses. I mean, they really, there's some smart people that were involved in this because they didn't just give you a piece of software that works on a set printer or on a set setting. Everything is variable from the firmware. The, there's actually a slicing engine that'll slice your model. You can adjust a whole lot of settings on that. And there, there are several different engines that would do this. So to your point, um, I tweaked the, some of the firmware that lives actually on the printer. Um, I've tweaked some of the slicing software. I'd like to actually post these uh, on the blog to try and help other people. Um, the idea being that when, when it ships, it'll come set with a preset. Here it goes. Hopefully it'll work great. Um, and then with the instructions of if you tweak this setting or tweak that setting, it might, you know, this, this is your result. This is what this is will happen. Um, the trade-offs, <laughs> I found it went from terrible to great. But then when I would change the color, some, sometimes the, the red prints fantastic. Then you go to the blue and for whatever reason, the same settings are printed off. So I was trying to make a series of different settings for different filaments that I've experimented with, but that's kind of part of the idea, I guess, of being a kit. It's really, uh, unfortunately, at the end of the user, that if you're not buying filament that I've produced or something, then you really have to kind of tweak it and get your settings just right. But once they're right, it works pretty much non you know, nonstop. Okay, one last question. Uh, what, what's the largest print? <laughs> I knew that was going to come up, and it's, it's such a shame because it's such a big printer. The um, Bonsai Pod is actually the largest one right now. Uh, it seems like pretty much every single night I've been printing parts for the new printers and just uh, tweaking settings and adjustments, so I haven't had a chance to really do a full-out print. That print was about uh, two weeks ago, I think I did it. So I'd like to get something that really shows the size. You know, that's the point of it. So. Yeah. Let's see you build something that's max. How long will that take? <laughs> That bonsai pot was long. It was about 16, 17 hours. It's, it's long. Um, some printers can get quicker. The smaller printers can really print fast, but that's the trade-off. If you're going smaller, you're not moving as much stuff around. Um, I'd like to get it to where that thing is printing in maybe 12 hours, something a little more reasonable, but um, they, they take a while. You know? So the idea is if you can just let it go all night. Yeah. I'm going to ask the last question. Yeah. And that is, I mean, what, what, how did you take it upon yourself Design the 3D printer. I mean, you don't know anything about 3D printers. I mean, why did you do? Why did you do that? I love building. What gives you the right? <laughs> no, you know. I, <laughs> and how long ago? This. Oh, I, th I thought I put the date. This is um, started 2000, late 2010, I think it was. Um, did the rep wrap. The rep wrap was great. I'll tell you, for people that know just a little bit about electronics, the rep wrap is a fantastic thing to start with because there are so many resources out there. But I don't know, I just, I like, I like designing and building and detailing things, and this process has taught me an incredible amount about, you know, the fact that, you, I didn't even know what McMaster car was two years ago. You know, and it's, it's, it's great to know where you can get parts and how I can just maybe do the next project if this, for whatever reason, doesn't work, but, um, yeah.